Hi, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Awaken to Your Soul Path. I'm your host, Barbara, and I am joined by the lovely Robin as my co-host. And today we want to talk about the Lion's Gate that is opening at the moment and all the energies that come with it and the sheer overwhelm that it can cause because we've both been feeling it. And we also know a lot of other people that have been feeling it. So we thought this would be the perfect topic for today's episode, didn't we, Robin? We did. We did. I've, I have been in a weird energy situation. Um, on yesterday, I, the only thing I could do was lay on my couch and drink water. I'm very grateful that my healer was available and she was able to do a session on me in the afternoon and discovered I was completely depleted. Um, I'm going to call it chi energy because it's about the only way I can describe it. But we have two layers of energy. We have one on the outside of our body and one on our inside of our body. I was depleted of both of those. I really needed her work on me, that extra energy um, to help to get all this energy moving again. I was in so much physical pain that it I, I couldn't even walk. Um, so yeah, it's interesting what's going on right now. Yes, I hear you. I was not in, well, I'm, I'm, I wanted to say I was not in physical pain, but that's not true. Last week I had my period and it was beyond painful. It has never been that painful. I had a headache and uh, my muscles hurt, my belly hurt, my back hurt. It was beyond anything I've ever experienced with my period. So I think that that's playing a part in it. And I've just been tuckered out. These past two weeks, I haven't been able to do anything. I cannot focus on anything. I don't want to focus on anything. I've been doing as little as possible. Um, just being just being was already taking all of my energy I, I agree it's it's been really tough just to try to be I mean just I was had a list of things I was going to do yesterday and I couldn't do any of it and it's been like that like you said for the last couple of weeks I have not had that extra energy or the enthusiasm to do anything. I even had a new friend to come over and I almost canceled last Monday because I just didn't have the energy to host someone. Um, but she still came over and she was the same way. She had no energy. She spent the whole time yawning. We both were so exhausted. But it was just nice just to share our energy with each other and just be present. Yes, I agree. I think that that's also why it's so important that we talk about this subject. You know, we are not the only people going through this. We are not the only people feeling like this. Um, but I do know that a lot of people don't know where it's coming from. And that might ignite old hurts. It might ignite old patterns, old beliefs about yourself, or even thinking, oh my God, I thought I had gone through this all, that I had healed and let all of this go. So why is this coming back? Or what is happening? It can, it can spiral you downwards um, if you're not careful. So that's why I think it's, it's an important thing to talk about. Uh, we, we talked in previous episodes already about the downloads and the uploads that we are getting. Um, and we've talked about how you can keep yourself in balance, how you can be kind to yourself. And especially now with the Lions Gate opening and everything that's being asked of us, it's so important that we have our support network around us, like a healer that we can call if things become so bad that we actually need some energy or some healing or um, even also friends, you know, where you can at least share this with because a shared burden makes it lighter than when it's your burden. And I don't know how it is for you, Robin, but the moment I know that this is happening, that the Lion's Gate is opening and what it means, we will go into what it means um, a, a bit later in this episode, but just knowing that that is what's happening and that I'm not the only one affected somehow makes it bearable. Yeah, Barbara, it does. It It's about um, understanding that we're all going through this, but at the same time, we have on planet Earth, we have got all of 
these, we're going to call them the elites that want to shut down our spirituality. And they're doing it in so many different ways. They're doing it, you know, with the so-called jab and they're doing it with these blue lights and they're doing it by destroying our food and our water systems. So we have got all of these things happening. I don't know about you, but there are floods and just all kinds of weird, crazy things going on all over the world. This is just not happening in one country, every single country. We're being cooked, we're being flooded, we're, our, we're having volcanoes, we've gotten the earth erupting. Um, we know that's not natural. Yeah, lots of forest fires are here. We've been having crazy weather. It's extremely hot it's it, it has never been as hot as it is now here but then that's only one or two days and then we have massive storms and then it cools down to almost needing a jacket again and then it warms up to these crazy temperatures major storms again hail storms i saw with you we we've been having those as well so it's it's everything feels like it's going crazy and sometimes it also feels like I am going crazy. <laughs> like my world is going crazy. Yeah, because Barbara, if if Mother Earth, Planet Earth is being attacked by these, and I'm going to blame the elite for this. They have machines that can affect the weather. They've been doing the chemtrails for years. They're now spraying the jab with helicopters over the major cities in Canada. Um, so they're doing all of these things. They are literally attacking Mother Earth. And those of us that are sensitive, those of us that are highly spiritual, we're connected to Mother Earth. So think of Mother Earth as being attacked. That vibration is going out. We're picking up that vibration. We're trying to support Mother Earth. She's under attack. She's supposed to be supporting us. We're in this vortex of negative energy. Yes. Yes, exactly. It's, it's an ongoing assault on all fronts and it makes it harder and harder especially a sense of people because i think everybody feels it but we tend to feel it stronger indeed because of our connection with the earth it's becoming harder and harder to just be to exist to to create your life uh, it's if i look around i see all entrepreneurs going crazy offering their services with huge discounts which to me also doesn't sound like it's still authentic or believable anymore um so all the people that are losing their job are starting their business coaching is a free profession so they're popping up like crazy everywhere it's it's everybody is scrambling to make something off of the out of their life or to create an existence for themselves and nobody really knows where we are going or what this leads to and it gives a lot of uncertainty and a lot of anxiety and a lot of fears that i see happening in people yeah and the thing is is that this is what this group of elites want they want us so unbalanced so to the point of panic that we lose faith in ourselves we lose faith in our spirituality we lose faith in what is important to us so this is one of the i have this wonderful woman i like to listen to um her name is amanda ellis and she was talking about the lion's gate and she said that the lion's gate is going to go through but we need to protect the lion's gate this time, believe it or not. We need to create this amazing protective energy for ourselves. And how we do that is we call in the element of air. We call in, believe it or not, Nikola Tesla and his wind turbine. And we call in Archangel Zadkiel and the violet flame and i do that every day i've been doing that since i listened to her video every day i call those aspects in and what we do by doing that is we create a, a protected portal 
for all of the spiritual people who are meant to go walk through this lion's gate, we are creating that protective portal so that they can get into it and they can go through. Um, so if you do that, if you call in those elements in your meditation every day, you are going to allow other people to get past this crazy negative vibration um, that's being created on planet Earth. Well, I love that you're telling me this because one of my favorite pendants at the moment, you know, I create my own pendants with uh, uh, epoxy resin and, and uh, gemstones and essential oils and, and, and things from nature in it. And one of my favorite ones is the violet flame one that indeed uh, has also a tensor ring in it. And a tensor ring is something that creates that portal that keeps the energy flowing and keeps it open. So that explains why I've been drawn to that one, especially now at the moment. So thank you so much for sharing that. Yeah. And for those of you that work with dragons, you can call in the violet flame dragons because we really need the energy. Now, I want to say here that part of this miscommunication is that some people think the dragons are on the opposite side. <laughs> okay. But just think of it. There's positive and negative. There's good. There's bad. And if you, I've been working with dragons for about 20, over 25 years now, um, that dragon energy is really beautiful. Bring in whoever your animal spirit guides are and really start working with them. And one of the things that I, I really want to stress is we have to get back to praying. We need to get back to be praying, connecting with our source. Now, I was watching a TikTok the other day, and it's amazing where you get your information, YouTube, TikTok. Yeah. Well, there was a gentleman who was talking about, they found a bunch of old scrolls that was way before the Bible was ever written. Now, in the Bible, um, one of the prophets asked, when, asked God, when are we considered human, alive? And God's answer was, when you take your first breath. Now, now this man went on and he says, we've been told that God's name is I am. And he goes, that is not true. God's name is in our breath. We breathe in and it's V-A and we breathe out and it's W-H. So give it a try. So it should be like Va and Wa. That's God's name. Our in-breath and our out-breath, va-wa is God's name. So every breath we take, we are actually using the creator's name. And that, mm. and I am not a person who ever got into any of that breath work. But when I realize that every time I take in a, a breath and excel it, I am using the creator's name, that has helped me so mm. much in the last couple of days. Yes, because that literally means that you connect yourself with, call it source energy, call it God, call it the universe, whatever name you wanna give it, Allah, I don't care. You connect with it nonstop, with every breath you take. Well, think about how empowering that is. Exactly. This so is why nobody breath. wants you to know. You, every time you take an in-breath and excel, you are, are actually calling the creator into you. There are so many people in this world that feel lonely, that feel like they are alone in the world, that don't have uh, friends or a support system. And I think just knowing that you're connecting yourself to this higher power every single moment of every single day with every breath that you're taking can already be an enormous support, right? In, in, in not feeling so alone, in not feeling so lonely, because that was a huge theme for a large part of my life where I thought there was absolutely nobody in the world that gave a damn about me. That yeah. was the me. Yeah, and, and I, I think I said VA, but it's VH and WH. My penmanship sucks. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and especially it's, when you write it quickly. Because yeah, it's, and I don't have glasses on because I lost my pair of glasses like three Sundays ago that I used for the computer and they're gone. <laughs> yeah. Hello. But, yeah, so when we are 
you know, when we realize that every breath we take is calling the creator into ourselves, we're connecting to our creator. Um, that's really empowering. Yes, and, yes. you know, that's what I did all day Sunday before my healer was able to connect with me and do that session. That's what kept me sane. I was in so much pain. Mm -hmm. Well, I listened to YouTube music too, but you know, that kept me sane until she could get to me and help me. Yeah, now, I'm doing breath work as well. And I'm doing a lot of clearing sessions to just clear out the energy, clear out stagnant energy, clear out negative energy, clear out turbulent energy. You know, it doesn't really matter just keeping everything cleared because I did it, do it for a couple of days and it felt like I was going up the wall, literally. <laughs> remember to turn off mine <laughs> no mine is turned off but i think this is my friend that is the only one that's allowed to go through everything oh yes uh, there's one friend i have and she i will call her as soon as we are done but she is is 83 so okay. she is programmed into my phone and whenever she calls she goes through everything because i have it on silent <laughs> I love that you have a friend to do that. Now, I also want to talk about pain because you brought it up. I brought it up. Yes. So in my session yesterday, what she said is because the, you know, the fibromyalgia pain was so intense and I went through a stage where I didn't have any at all. But since I started working back at, you know, this part time job, it's come back with a vengeance. And so what my healer had me is she said, you need to learn to soften the pain, like soften the nerve endings. So she says, what represents softness to you? And I'm like, well, marshmallows, I, I love marshmallows. And then as she's, you know, so I'm visualizing a marshmallow and then all of a sudden that Pillsbury Doughboy came up. Do you remember those commercials? No. Okay, so in Canada, in the United States, we have what's called Pillsbury dough. And it's pre cut dough that makes crescents and cinnamon buns and things like that. But when I was a kid, when they advertised it, it was this big, fluffy dough that looked like a snowman. Oh, and you would wow. always poke him in the belly and he would giggle in the commercial. So for what I did for the outer energy was the Pillsbury Doughboy and for the inner energy, it was a female marshmallow. So that was my masculine and feminine energy. And that's what I visualized. And mm -hmm. so when I feel that pain now, I visualize those two, you know, talking, having fun, him laughing when you poke his belly, you know, but finding a way to visualize softness on the outside and the inside of my body. So it's yeah. just a fun way of doing it. Well, most definitely. I love your analogies. <laughs> I think everybody that is listening today has a very clear image now of what you're meaning. <laughs> and I love it. Yeah, yes, exactly. It's, it's, it's an interesting time. And, and for the Lionsgate opening, there are about four main themes that are playing a role. And the first one that I wanted to talk about is that basically anything can happen if you embrace the mystery of life. That's the energy that we are moving towards. So first we need to clear ourselves and heal ourselves and let go of everything, you know, to step into that gate. And now we are entering a phase where you need to let yourself be seen that you also need to see that life is bigger than you know, that there's more to life than that you can currently see. And that it's coming back to what you said in the beginning, it's, it's about trusting in life and having faith that your future is happening exactly as it is supposed to be happening. And, and that faith, that is the secret sauce having faith that whatever you are going through, that whatever is happening, even if it's extremely uncomfortable, I know uncomfortable, Robin knows uncomfortable, we know uncomfortable, <laughs> but even if it's extremely uncomfortable, that, that it's for your highest good and also trusting that whatever is coming for you is in your highest good. Because inner peace, it's, it's not about understanding something. It's about trusting, 
trusting that you are where you need to be, trusting that you have what you need to have, trusting that whatever is happening needs to happen and accepting all of that from a place of love while sort of embracing the mystery of life. Does that still make sense? Yes, and, and that is why I say that, you know, we need to call in the angels, we need to call in God, we need to call in our spirit guides, we need to call in our animal guides, we need to completely be embraced by all of the energies that are there waiting for us just to ask for assistance. Exactly, exactly. You know, and, and, and the other thing that's coming it's, it's for me it's already starting a little bit it's epiphanies suddenly something is going to make a lot of sense things that happened before that didn't really make sense at that moment they are going to make sense it's either that and this is the thing that's been happening to me and the other thing is that you will have like an amazing idea that will take you to where you want to be something like spontaneous enlightenment so I'm, I'm really looking forward to that part because i've been maybe you could call it stuck or or, or disconnected from what i thought my my vision was for my future what my dreams were and 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 also not really knowing what action to take so i've just been practicing inner peace and faith and just surrendering lots of surrendering and letting go and surrendering some more which for me is not easy but uh, it's it's going well i really have to say it's, it's going above and beyond well um but the time that we are moving into with the lion's gate opening is where you will find your thing, where things will start to make sense again. And I, for one, cannot wait for things to start making sense again because they haven't made sense for quite some time. Um, so I'm, I'm really looking forward to that. And, and it's also about finding your tribe, finding people that start opening up to you that are roughly in the same path. So I'm, I'm assuming since you're listening or watching to these episodes that you are such a person. And that's exactly why we have our groups. Robin has our Sunday uh, women's group that meets. Uh, I have my solutions group that meets every week. And they are all about connecting with like-minded people that are going through the same things that are committed to helping each other listening to each other learning together growing together uh healing each other and and just lifting each other up to the next level right robin yeah absolutely you you know i have this new friend i was telling you about she has a meditation and she does a meditation every morning at 6 30 a.m my time for her group and they get together and they do a group meditation um but that's exactly what it's about we we need to find that system or those people or that group that help raise us up and when we're in a group setting we're taking from collective energy and we and it's nice just to have that support structure and know that other people are going through the same thing you are. Yes, exactly. Yes. And, and the third one that I'm seeing, and it's, it's crazy that my cat just joined me, it's, it's about heart energy. It's all about love. It's about connecting with the, the, the heart energy. It's about um, allowing yourself to either be bold or to be um maybe a little cautious still but not closing yourself up it's opening yourself up from a place of love being curious to whatever comes next and then it can be a challenge because we've had so many things happen that were far from pleasant that a lot of us have been closing ourselves off and maybe um, secreting yourself away from the world a little bit but um right now it's it's about opening your heart it's about letting go of any and all feelings of unworthiness or not being enoughness that have been dominating the past 
time, past weeks or maybe even months. But now it's time to, to let go and to feel that we are deserving of love. It's, it's opening yourself up to receiving love, to receiving abundance. And I was talking to Robin and I, I met a new love and it didn't go as planned. And there are a lot of lessons to get out of there for me. And I could have gone the route where you feel very hurt and close yourself off again. And instead I chose to acknowledge the hurts and pains that he connected with, with me. Uh, parts of my childhood I thought I had let go of that I didn't fully let go of and that were triggered by him massively and I got to heal them this past week was it fun no but was it useful yes because I don't want to be triggered in that way anymore I want to be me and come from a place of love, come from a place of abundance, come from a place of curiosity and joy. Like when we are children, when, when nothing scares us and everything's like, ooh, new thing. <laughs> and come from, from that place, from that energy. And apparently there was still something left in me that needed to be cleared or needed to be healed. And he helped me find that part. So I'm looking at the silver lining in, in the experience and, and what it taught me or what it brought me, um, further opening myself up to receiving love and abundance. And that is also a big theme of this Lion Gate thing. So it could be that you are inviting a new person into your life. It could be also adopting a cat or a dog. It could be meeting a new love relationship, um, but it could also be just starting something new in your business. Maybe you've been working on something for quite a while. I've been working on something for quite a while that I never really actually put into the world because it didn't feel like the right time. And that's this period where we are moving into where we can finally bring it out shine a light on it and share it um so it could be something that you've been working on in, in, in secret or it could be that you are starting your business for the first time maybe you're ending a business starting a new business um but that's that's also part of the energy of what's going on and we need to get ready for that meaning letting go of any and all hurts and things that are preventing us from being ready for that. Yeah, I, I agree, Barbara. There's this, for me, uh, taking this part-time job um, brought up a lot of old programs, patterns, which I thought, you know, I had released. And it was around um, ego, it was around being judgmental, but the, the number one thing is that I really asked for a lot of assistance in this. And so then I picked up my human design again, the book and my program, and I'm, I'm doing one for, for somebody else. And I'm looking at that and I'm like, holy cow, my programming in this lifetime is that I am required to prove my worth. And I am like, Oh, duh. <laughs> so then the things like my dad saying, you know, if you're going to go do a job, don't take the job unless you're going to give 110%. So that fed into that program or that part of my human design where I have to go to work and prove that I'm worthy of that job every single day. And in trying to prove my worth, I'm trying to, I'm going to say basically not outwork other people, but whoa, look at me, look at how much I'm getting done today. And look at these other people are just standing around and doing nothing. So that was the ego and the judgment part that was coming in. And I asked for an incredible amount of assistance in there because one, I had my childhood programming. Two, it's in my human design. Three, judgmental. We are taught to judge from the moment we are born. So we have that inbred ancestral judgment program in us. And I have actually been able to go to work the last, this week now, you know, last week and step out of that. 
and cut back on what I was trying to do. I, it was like, you know what? I'm just going to go in there and work at my own pace exactly. and not worry about what anybody else is doing. Exactly. Then that's also what I've been doing with my business. I've just done nothing. Mm -hmm. I've never done nothing in my business because I always thought I need to do this and this and this and this and this and this and this. And it's liberating to just feel into whatever is there and taking action based on how you're feeling. I wasn't feeling any inspiration, so I didn't post anything. I wasn't feeling inspirational, so I didn't create anything. And is that wrong? I don't think so, because how can you create inspirational content when you're not feeling inspirational <laughs> or when you or yourself are not inspired by, by, by other things? So I'm proud of you, Robin, for doing that. And I think that that's a big lesson for a lot of us that we need to let go of society's expectations, other people's expectations, but also your own expectations of yourself because we tend to be stars in raising the bar really high, <laughs> especially for ourselves. And, and then that's connecting with that hard energy again, coming from that place of love feeling like it's safe for me to trust in a new beginning. It's safe for me to open up and to allow, but it's also safe for me to express my limits, to express my boundaries and to only focus on the things that feel aligned, that make me happy without thinking about what that would mean or what other people would think about it. And just coming from a place of self-love because hey, you're not the self-love emiss um, emissary for nothing. And that's also a huge part of, of my teachings. It's It's about loving yourself enough to do what you need to do for yourself to keep yourself flowing with that river instead of trying to paddle upstream again or God knows drowning in the river or you know all the other things that could happen to you in the river and and you know it, it has been a lot to keep yourself floating and flowing along with river lately. It, it has, it's been overwhelming. And I want people to understand that, I mean, Barbara and I do meditation every day. We, we, we have our different ways of doing it, but we, what we do every day has not been enough for the last couple of weeks. We've just had to, like Barbara says, we've just had to surrender, except the fact that I can't, I have not done anything on my business either for the last couple of weeks. I, you know, my posting is intermittent. I just had to surrender and understand that it's important sometimes just to take care of yourself, just to do that inner work on yourself and not worry about the outside world. Um, you know, things aren't going to collapse if you go from doing something every day to doing it three times a week or even twice a week or not at all <laughs> or not at all for a couple of weeks like a lot of people have been you know they'll leave facebook for a month or instagram they come back i mean we need to take that self-care we need to put ourselves first and yes and really please don't forget to connect with the angels your spirit guides the animals and nature Exactly. And it also doesn't mean that you are lazy. It doesn't mean that you are giving up. It doesn't mean that you are egoistic. It doesn't mean that the only thing you care about is yourself. It means that you are practicing proper self-care. It means that you have the wisdom to discern when things are going the way they are supposed to and when they are not going the way supposed to and knowing what you need to do to get yourself into the high vibration energy again and if that means that like me you have to plant your behind in a hammock next to a lake and enjoy the sunshine and do absolutely nothing then that is what it means and it doesn't mean anything bad or negative about you about your life about your business about you as a business owner or you as an employee if you're still working for a boss i thought that that was also important to mention because most of us we feel guilty 
when we do nothing. And there are a lot of gurus out there that proclaim that you need consistency because consistency is key and you need to be out there and you need to be out there every day and you need to push and produce and go, 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 go. And no, <laughs> that's not what you need. If you feel that that is what you need, then by all means, you know, do it, but don't do it just because you're then doing it, if that makes sense. Do it if it feels aligned. And if you're feeling like we are, then it's not aligned and it's just too much. And you need to just do everything you need to do to keep your boat floating and to keep your boat flowing down river and if that means doing nothing then that's what it means if it means doing twice a week something instead of twice a day then that's what it means and yeah i wanted to add something brilliant but you know i lost my train of thought <laughs> yeah i'm gonna add something brilliant no <laughs> yeah, all right properly impressed now no <laughs> I didn't realize, and I probably should know this, but one of the things that in my healing session yesterday was that my healer told me that we have heart chakra energy in our hands. Now, I'm sure at, yeah, one time when I took my Reiki, I knew that, but I have so much information that comes through. I forget, you know, we forget about those things. So then I was like, Oh, that makes so much sense because with healers, we do, we use our hands. And when we're in pain, we put our hand on the area oh. where we're in pain. Yeah. So our body, our soul knows exactly what we need to do. This is why when we get hurt, we put our hand there. So it's just a reminder that we have this wonderful body. We have this energy. It knows what it needs to do. We need to just start trusting what our body is trying to tell us. And if our body says you need to lay on the couch all day Sunday and drink nothing but water, honor that. What do you have to do? Exactly. So I think when we are about to close off our, our episode of today, but um, in, in light of what we talked about, um, to manifest the life that you want at this moment with this new energy, it's very important that you stay in the present, stay in the now, do what needs to be done in the now, that you tap into your hard energy, and that you use the lion's courage to go for the things that you want while trusting your intuitive signs and your helpers, I call it my dream team, to be there for you whenever you need to. And if any of what you heard today resonates with you and you need more help, reach out to me, reach out to Robin. We would both love to help you. If you have questions about anything that we've shared today, also reach out to me, reach out to Robin. We both have like a free coffee chat that you can book. I'll make sure that the links are below this episode so that you can contact us very easily. We would love to just talk with you and support you through these times. And if you wanna join either one of our groups, then also contact us. We would be more than happy to share this information with you. And for right now, I just, I wanna send everybody a whole bunch of love, opening the heart chakra and no, you're not alone. You're not the only one going through this. You can contact us day and night. I will not promise I will answer when I'm asleep, but <laughs> I am in a different time zone from Robin. So we, we've basically got you covered day and night, right? Between the two of us. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I just wish you an amazing rest of your day. Thank you for watching. Thank you for being here. And we look forward to seeing and talking with you again in our next episode. Bye, everybody. <laughs>